Mandela hypnotherapist, transformation coach, and a spiritual teacher. You're about to listen to a recording of one of my regression sessions. If you enjoy the content on my channel, please consider subscribing. And if you click on the bell, it will inform you of any of my future postings. Also, leave a comment and click like, because that helps to bring this kind of content to more viewers. I hope you enjoy the recording, and I hope to see you again in my future videos. And I want you to tell me the very first thing you notice as you reach the surface. Like a wagon wheel. Is this wagon wheel attached to a wagon? Huh. By itself? Mm -hmm. Where do you see it? I think it's leaning up against the building. Okay, so as you expand your awareness, you're going to become aware of what this building looks like. And you might even begin to notice what's next to you. It's like a small town out west. What do you see? I see buildings lined up in twos and threes together. Dirt roads. You see people around? They're there. So I'd like you to look down at your feet and tell me what you're wearing on your feet. Cowboy boots. And become aware of what you're wearing in your body. Dark pants. Maybe like a dark blue shirt. Do you have anything on your head? I can't see it. Are you carrying anything in your hands? I don't think so. You said there are people. Become aware of what's happening around you a little bit more. They seem to be noticing me. Are they reacting in any way? I think so, yeah. Like, surprise almost. Why do you think that is? I don't know. So I'd like you to become aware of why you are standing there in that town. I came back. So you left at some point? Yes. Are you from this town originally? I think so. How long were you gone? Maybe a month. Maybe they thought I was dead. Are they saying anything to you? No, I'm just standing there in the street and they're looking from the buildings. How do you feel their feeling in the moment? Are they excited to see you? Yeah, it's good. Okay. So now just become aware of why you were absent from this town for this amount of time. I was out at hiding. Why was it necessary for you to hide? Something happened. So we're going to rewind the time. On the count of three, you're going to find yourself back at the time when something happened that led you to go into hiding. One, two, and three. And tell me what happened. I think I got shot. Take me through the event. What happened? It's crazy, but it was a gunfight. Did you intend to be involved in that gunfight? No, I don't feel like I wanted to. So were you just a bystander? No, I was in it. Who were you shooting at? Dark pants and white shirt. Was it just the two of you or were there more people? I feel like there were more against me. And why were they shooting at you? I'm feeling like they misunderstood me. 
We're going to freeze that moment so you're going to be safe. And as that moment freezes, you will become aware of where you were just before it started and how the whole thing began. So tell me what happened. It's his sister. She's jealous because of his sister. Were you interacting with his sister? Yes. What happened? I think he likes her. He likes his own sister? Uh huh. Like romantically? Uh huh. And what was your relationship with her? Romantic. Are you involved with her? Yes. Do you all live in the same town? Yes. And so what happened on that day? I was just walking down the road, and there were three of them. Two were off to the sides, but the one main is coming out to face me. Does he say anything? Cursing me. How do you respond? Calm down. I don't know what your issue is. Now tell me what age you are at this point. It feels young. It feels like 23. And he's older. How does his sister feel about you? The same as I do. Is she aware that he is jealous? Yes. And what does she have to say about that? She's afraid of him. So what happens after you tell him to calm down? I get shot. He shoots you? Mm -hmm. Did you have a gun in your hand at that point? Not in my hand. Where do you get shot on your body? It feels like at the stomach, right here. On the right side of your stomach? Mm hmm. And what happens next? I run. What do they do? Nothing. Let me run. Do you feel that they intended to kill you? Yeah, to kill. Okay, but they let you go? Uh huh. Thought I was dead. Where do you go? Out into the open. Do you have family in town? Relatives? I'm hearing I have an aunt. So where do you go with that wound? Into hiding out in the open. So you plan to just be there by yourself with that wound? Mm-hmm. What happens next? I just hide. It's out west. It's like Nevada or Montana or something. How bad is the wound? It looks really bad. Just move forward maybe a day or two and tell me how you're surviving out there in the open. Oh, that's why I went back. It was not as long as I thought. So you go back for what? To survive. Let's go back now to the time when you have come back. People are looking at you with some surprise. It's the wound. I see. So become aware of what your condition is at that point. I'm bad. I'm walking. I'm not good, though. Is your wound still unhealed? Yes. And how long have you been gone? Like a day or two. And become aware of where you are heading. To the doctor. Okay. So go ahead and find yourself reaching your destination and tell me what happens when you get to the doctor. He grabs me and helps me come in to the building. He's working on me. Does he tell you how bad it is or what he notices? No, he's just fixing it. 
He thinks he's got it. I feel good. I don't feel like I'm dying. And what do you do next? I fall asleep in the doctor's office. Okay. So now move to the time when you wake up and tell me what happens next. She's there. Your sweetheart? Mm Mm-hmm. She just looks worried. Are you able to move or are you supposed to stay there? No, I can get up. So what do you plan to do next? To hold her. Of course. Do you talk about what happened to her? No, it's just sort of confusion, like either go or stay. What do we do? Go meaning go out of town? Mm Mm-hmm. I guess go is the only way. What about her? With her. Okay. So I want you to freeze that moment for now. And I'd like you to see yourself standing in front of a place where you live. One, two, and three. And describe to me what you see. It's a small wooden house outside of town. I see dust outside. So there's not much greenery around? No, there's not. Okay. So when you go inside, what do you notice? It's dark, dusty. smells like leather and dust. How many rooms are in the house? Three that I can see from the door. There's a big room where the front door is with the kitchen and open area in it. And there's a smaller, like, pantry type area to the left. And then I can see daylight coming through a doorway off to the right. I think that's a bedroom back there. So you can move freely through this house. And as you're going around, become aware of who lives in this house besides you. I think her and I think two kids. So are you married already? I don't know. Must be. Yeah, that's our house. Make sure that you're still within that time frame of being around 23 years old and you're still in your town. Yeah, I think I was older there. Okay. So we're going to go back to the doctor's office and unfreeze that moment when you and she are deciding whether you should stay or leave town. Tell me what you're going to do. We're going to leave so I don't have to kill him. So if you stay, you would have to kill them? I think... And as you move forward in time, tell me how the events unfold. I know we want to go because we have to go. But we want to go right now. We go to her house to get her stuff. Now we're out of town. So you're able to leave without an incident? Yes. Okay. Do you have a destination in mind? There is one. I can't see it, though. The word sunshine came to me earlier. I don't think it's actually sunshine. I think it's the S-H. Is it the name of a place? Yes. How long is your journey? Not far, a day and a half. How are you traveling there? I can see, I think, a carriage that's going to take us. We don't own it. Like a horse, buggy. You hire it? Yeah. What do you do when you reach the destination? We get out where there's family, someone there. Tell me what happens when you arrive there. It's a nice day. The sun's shining. It's kind of cool. We're happy, it's a new start, and we're away. Where are you staying? 
I think we're at her sister's house in town and we're gonna stay there. How is this town in comparison to the town you just came from? It's bigger and it's newer and it's nicer. There's more people. And does her sister have a bigger house? Mm-hmm. Nice. How is your wound? I'm healing. So what do you decide to do? How are you going to support yourself? I think work here. So to see yourself finding work, and tell me what you do. I'm seeing people and friends that are made. I know we work together, I can't see what we do. Is it easy for you to make friends? Yes. Do you enjoy being with people? Mm-hmm. So become aware of one of those times when you connect with people. Where are you? Outside. It's a nice day under trees and just talking. Is it a day of work or rest? Work. I'm doing something with work. If I'm loading something up, you work with your hands? Mm-hmm. And when you're sitting under the trees, are you taking a break? I'm standing, talking. What are you talking about? So I can hear just the banter. It's not work talk, it's just friendly talk. We're loading up some kind of supplies or something small, small boxes. Where are you loading them? The wagon. And where is it going to go? To his house. Who is he? He's a friend. Can you tell what you're loading? It's like living supplies. That's stuff for him and his family. Is he buying something? Yes. So, are you just helping him out? Not that he needed it. I was just going over to talk. I see. Tell me what you do during the day to make a living. I'm seeing that I help out on a ranch. What do you do on the ranch? Whatever needs done. How do you like this work? doesn't pay very well, but they're nice. Do you plan to stay there or find something else? Uh, stay there for now. Plan to stay. Do you get married? Oh yes, we stay together. That's what it's about. Do you actually have a wedding? I know that we do. I'm trying to see it. I can't. So on the count of three, I'd like you to see yourself moving to the next significant event in that lifetime. One, two, and three. Tell me what happens. We're in our own house. I built it with friends. It's off on its own. It's not in town. It's out in... Why did you choose to be out of town, not in town? I think, in a sense, to partially stay hidden, and it was cheaper. I could just build. How is your wife now? She's fine and happy. What does she do during the day? So, cleans, goes to see her sister. And where do you work? At the same ranch and at our own ranch. You have your own ranch? House with a garden and I can see a couple of animals. Do you have enough to live on? Yes. So as I count to three, I'd like you to move to the last day of that lifetime. One, two, and three. Tell me what you're experiencing. 
I'm an old man in a suit. About what age are you? 80s, 82 or 86. What kind of suit are you wearing? Gray. I think there might be pinstripes. I'm getting a derby hat. And where are you? I think I'm in the funeral home. It's either that or it's a, a nice dark house with fabric on the walls. It's dark. Oil lamps. I'm conducting some kind of business. It is a funeral home with the owner. And what's the business? It might be my wife. Oh, she passed? Uh-huh. I'm sorry. What are the arrangements that you make? Just to put her in a casket and bury. And just see yourself leaving and going about your day. And tell me what happens next. It's a pretty day out, the sun is shining, the birds are singing. I'm somewhere else. It's got trees. So it doesn't look like the town where you lived? No, it does not. What do you see around you? Trees and people. It's a city of some kind. And buildings. There's people and noise and children. Do you see any type of transportation on the roads? Yes. What kind? There's old cars. Old cars. And so where are you heading as you leave the funeral parlor? I think I'm heading home. I'm walking. I'm arriving. So describe to me what you see. I see a guy being thrown out. Not me. I don't know that that's got anything to do with me. Just being thrown out of the house or something. He's got blonde hair. I don't know why they showed me that. But I just kept going home. So as you see yourself walking up to the place where you live, describe to me what it looks like. Red iron picket fences close to the road. It's more like a townhome. Does it look like inside? Frilly curtains and glassware. It's bright and nice. I'm seeing the small furniture, the spindly legs, the lamp of the first floor. This house you shared with your wife, was there anybody else in it? I feel like someone else did live there, but I can't see them. It might be our son. So what do you do when you come home? I just walk in. I saw someone throwing that man out. I don't know why, but I go in. I feel lonely. I realize I am alone. You spent many years with your wife. Mm-hmm. How was your life together? I was so happy. She was the reason always for everything. So I'd like you to move to the last moments in that life. Tell me what you're experiencing. I'm seeing died in bed. A nice house, nice bed. Is it on the same day you made funeral arrangements for your wife? It's hard to tell. It's not long. Do you pass because of an illness or something else? I'm getting that it's natural. So I just want you to become aware of your spirit lifting out of its body. And as you begin to expand your awareness, what are your first thoughts about that life? That it was a good life, that I loved her. It was the best. 
Now as you're blending with your soul, you may notice that there's someone waiting for you there, greeting you. And tell me if you see someone. Uh-huh. Who is it? Her. How does she look? Exactly the same. What age does she appear to you? Young. Maybe 28. She came to greet me. She's glad to see me. Everything's okay. So I'd like you now to become aware from a soul perspective what the purpose of that life was for you. I think it was the closeness with her. That's what it was about the whole way. So then you accomplished what you wanted to experience? Yes. As you give her one last hug for now, you're going to experience those images fading away. I would like to ask Tony's higher consciousness to step forward. Would you be willing to step forward and allow me to ask you some questions? Yes. Thank you. So I know that you could have brought forth many different lifetimes for Tony to see today. But you ch chose the life of a young man out west. Can you tell us why you selected this particular lifetime for him to review? So I understand, Jane. I carried that life with me into this, but this life is not about that. This life went on with Jane. And I wanted to hold on to that that was like the other life. Can you tell me what Tony's life purpose is in this life experience? To understand the, the possibility and the ability as a creator. So but tell me how that's presented to him. Anything is possible. Everything. And this time is to learn how to bring it to fruition. Does that have to do just with the creative artistic skills that he has? No, uh, anything. Anything he or anyone wants. So one of the things that he is dealing with is that he begins to doubt himself and has negative self-talk that kind of spins the negative scenarios in his head. Can you point to the source of that or why that is a challenge for him this time around? That's a part of what he's carried and he needs to let it go. It's a part of life that we have to learn to let go to be the creator. Some of the issues that he is dealing with are finding these social connections and also finding a balance between being alone with himself and then being social with others. So what I'm trying to understand is the connection between the life you presented to him and these issues in his current life. This life has not been stable. This has been one change after another to bring him here. That life was very much stable from the moment he decided what to do. Is stability an issue for him? Is that what causes negative self-talk or doubt? He doesn't see that he has it just because it's different. Because it's not as stable as he remembers subconsciously. What he expects. What is he expecting? He is the stability. He's expecting it from outside. So he needs to focus more on the internal stability? Yes. Put the expectations on himself. Can you bring him other soul memories that will help him tap into that internal self-awareness, internal confidence, just the knowing of oneself, knowing that there is peace and balance within, so that when he deals with any project that is put in front of him, 
he doesn't spin out of control and go into negative potentials, but instead can anchor himself into that internal stability that is him. Can you bring into his mind your awareness of internal stability? I think I'm seeing heaven or something. I think I'm seeing a time between life. And tell me what you're seeing. I and the people, we're all represented as children. I don't think we are, but that's how we seem. It's light, and there's an openness and a knowing that we're in a transitional place. But we have the knowledge, the knowledge that doesn't carry with us to here. And what do you become aware of that is significant for you to learn? I just see myself here with friends, and we're happy, and we're having fun, and we know this is brief, and we're on our way to somewhere else, but we're perfectly comfortable, like we've known each other forever. There are no secrets, like we're just all best friends, and here we are. And what do you understand or remember in that place that you forget when you enter human life? This isn't real. This life isn't the reality. The human one? Yes. It's just visions with rules, like a game to teach us things, to experience things in different ways that you can if you already know it all. So this time around, when you entered this vision like a game? I chose where I went. Mm -hmm. And what challenges did you want to have as part of the game? Because every game has some kind of challenges presented to its characters. The ability to rise, to understand, to rise above difficulty, strife. Let's make this shit tough as hell. Because he needs to know, otherwise he won't believe it. What are you trying to believe? The understanding that we are the creators. The magic isn't magic, it's normal and real. And we have blinders and then we believe the negativities and we look around and think that this is all real and it's not, it goes away. So the ultimate goal is for you to see through this illusion and to remember that you are the creator. And to help others understand that as well. And how could Tony best help others understand? In what way can he work with others? Talking and sharing the experiences and the beliefs. And would that also help him pull out of his self-talk? when he shifts his focus. Yes, it would grow his mind and theirs together. Mm -hmm. Are there any specific things that you would suggest that he can do for others or a way that he can work with others? Because simply preaching is not always received well by people. Slow down with Lee. Walk her through it. She's not where you're at. Don't expect it. Start there, and it'll grow to the others. One of the things he's trying to find is just inner peace and not filling up his time with projects that just keep him busy. So is there anything else you can share with him that will help him find that inner balance and inner peace? Take more time for the spiritual. Don't keep your head wrapped up in this 100% of the time. Take a break to remember the purpose. Daily meditate. I want to ask you about his connection with family. It's clear that his connection with his family was very strong in that life and it was very important to him. And in this life, is looking to connect 
with family, although he doesn't have the same type of relationships with his original family. But when he's looking to tap into the same connection, he associates it with drinking because that's what he experienced in his family. So can you help him untangle those two concepts, drinking and family? He's going to have to create what he's looking for. That's what it's all about. Does he feel that he doesn't have it? The family is there, but they'll never be what he wants, what he desires. That he'll have to create. Otherwise, they're there. They love him. So what should he create? Loving relationships that aren't centered around drinking or drugs, but centered around true communication, love and kindness. And so he already has that with his wife, correct? Yes. You're saying he can create other relationships like that? Yes. Where can he work on those relationships or create them? It starts at work. Start there. There's lots of life left. I'm wondering if the skills that he developed in that lifetime, he brought through to this life, because he's quite talented. And so I wonder if the things that he developed then, he should expand on in this lifetime. That lifetime was more about the attachment, and he would like to carry that on into this life. He still carries it, but that's not what this life is. Attachment to his wife? Yes. Now, is the soul of his wife in that life with him now? She is. Does he know who it is in this life? No, he doesn't. Okay. So the focus this time is just finding inner power and stepping into it, that creative power? Yes. In terms of this creative power, the skills that he developed in that lifetime, do they contribute to it? All of his lifetime skills are relevant. They're evidence to the greater things. Is anything in particular significant enough to bring to the forefront so he can tap into it again? It's just the knowledge of seeing it and creating it, whatever it is. Okay, thank you. And before I let you go, if there is anything that you want to say to him directly as a parting message, please go ahead and say it. Everything's okay. Everything is safe. Just go forward. Thank you. And I wonder if there is a message that you might have for humanity in general at this time. I know things are heavy. And it looks like they're getting worse, but they're not. It'll be a short time and you'll start to see the turn for the better. Thank you. I'm going to ask the higher consciousness to recede to where it belongs with much love and thanks for the help and information that it has given Tony today.